No one's saying they walk. But what you are saying is that if we bring you guys the case, it's your intention to let Barksdale and Bell reduce any sentence they get through cooperation, huh? Jesus Christ, are you kidding? You're seeing all this ass backwards. Detective, in this office, we have a mandate to pursue political corruption. Honestly, these guys? Jimmy, look. It's not a bad move because the politicians make the most laws. Well, how about terrorism? These guys have dropped 14, 15 bodies. The witnesses, cooperators. That yeah, kind of hyperbole doesn't serve anyone, Detective. If you go to the top, though, with the politicians, it'll correct that eventually. I get what they're saying. It's not a bad move. I think we're going with a different direction on this. I mean, it's, they're, I'm not saying they're right, but it's not the worst move. West Baltimore is dying, and you empty suits are running around trying to pin some politician's pelt to the wall. I thought you was real police, brother. I mean, they got to understand their position. I, I still agree with Daniels and McNulty, but it's not like the worst idea. You like him to step up? Take all the weight and let you walk? Because he will. You know he will. But if he got to go away, that means you got to step up and fill his shoes. You ready for that? <sighs> Ma, you know I ain't. I ain't ready, and I ain't never going to be ready for this. I was just going to say, he ain't Come ever going to be ready. They're giving me a chance to walk away, to start again someplace else. And what you giving them? His mom is going to bitch slap the crap out of him. He messed up, Dave. He knows it. Now, if you want to get even with him, you can. But you hurt him. You hurt this whole family. All of us. Me and Trina and the cousins. And Donette, too. And your baby. Your own baby boy. How the fuck are you gonna start over without your peoples? Without your own child, even? You ain't got family in this world. What the hell you got? That's true. Where the hell is he gonna go without his kid? I hope it's him. Anything you wanna tell me? Ah, oh, yes, please be Carver. Been weeks now. The deputy ops knows what's going on in this unit almost before I do. Except last week, we run the buck up in the Barksdale's club office. And Burrell, for once, he's a step behind. You see? Lieutenant, I swear it wasn't my idea. Oh, yes. I hate it. I minded my business, doing my fucking job. With the you man fucking me suck, you fucking cocksucker. I mean, I on the eighth floor of that fucking building. And there's the deputy fucking ops telling me how concerned he is about the case. He needs to be informed. I mean, he's the deputy fucking ops, man. Ooh, big fucking baby. Go cry somewhere else, you fucking little bitch. He's such a fucking asshole. I've hated him since the first minute. You all know. You saw my reactions. Episode one, I said, fuck this now. guy. He's a piece of shit. You're going to be in some district somewhere with 11 or 12 uniforms looking to you for everything. Now, some of them are going to be good police. Some of them are going to be young and stupid. A few are going to be pieces of shit. But all of them will take their cue from you. You show loyalty, they learn loyalty. You show them it's about the work, it'll be about the work. You show them some other kind of game, then that's the game they'll play. Comes a day you're going to have to decide whether it's about you or about the work. I would go outside and be like, hey, everybody, Carver's a sack of fucking shit. Oh, we better. Get 
I guess they got cooperation from Philly PD. Okay, put the asshole on. This is he. Uh, they got him back. And of course, it's the first the deputy hears his troops are creeping behind his back trying to take a case federal when they've already been told the case is closed. You're a good detective. I gotta admit, you got some stones on you. I want to see you land okay, Jimmy. So tell me, where don't you want to go? Oh, here's the Lester move. You all know as well it's as It's the I Lester move. First up. State versus Avon Randolph Barksdale, Your Honor. One count of possession with intent to distribute to it a kilogram of heroin. You have a statement of facts? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Barksdale is offering a plea of guilty in exchange for a maximum of seven years in DOC in consideration of the following agreed upon facts. A search of the vehicle, which was rendered from the Avis location at BWI Airport, revealed that a kilogram of nearly pure heroin was concealed beneath the spare tire in the car trunk. In accepting this plea, Mr. Barksdale acknowledges his role in procuring Reminiscent of episode one. Loot. I do better, I give him more. Life no parole means what it says. This proffer keeps you off death row, but that's all it does. You were on the wrong side of a cop getting shot, Mr. Bryce. You want to even dream about straight life for all these bodies? You've got to wake up talking about Avon Barksdale and Stringer Bell. Nah. But as to murders, you <laughs> might as well give them what you have. Because anything you leave out is outside the deal. If they learn about it later, they can charge you later. Fuck it, then. For another piss sandwich and some tater salad, I'll go a few more. How about them witnesses? The security lady. And what's his name? The maintenance man. Gant? Yeah. Gant. Omar killed him. You did Gant alone. I've been waiting Is Omar going to make, like, an appearance? Is Omar going to, like, swipe in because there's no one watching shit? Oh, my God. There was a different color couch. What the fuck? You're going to end the season without the orange couch? That's fucking the office. You can't move the office right before the finale's over. As Mr. Barksdale has two prior convictions and is insisting that the effort to purchase and transport the kilo was undertaken on his own behest and is refusing to cooperate against others in the conspiracy, the state is offering only the maximum allowable 20 years, Your Honor. Mr. Levy, this is your understanding of the plea agreement? Yes, sir. Very well then, Mr. Barksdale. Can you hear me distinctly? D is going to do 20 years and either agreeing to it? Go. He also takes William Gant. The handyman. No, it's bullshit. Well, how do you tell him? <sighs> Boom. What, he's had a contact wound? Yeah, it doesn't play. Gant had no compression, no stippling. Yeah, Ooh, they said it was from the back. The old lady said it was from a distance. This motherfuckers just take a murder just to take a murder. He's taking life, no parole for shooting a cop. What the fuck? Might as well try to spring bird for killing Gant. All right. Pull them ladders. Get slippery at the top. And many a happy go lucky saint has made that long, long drop. Santangelo. Fucking asshole. I'm happy Greg's is alive. That's where they put McNulty. It is. I knew Omar would come in at the end. I'm in your fucking one. Take about the F-O, honey. Damn. <laughs> All in the game, yo. <laughs> All in the game. <laughs> Why would I think? This. <laughs> this show. 
All right, guys. So that was the season finale. I marathoned it all. It is like 4.30 in the morning, but I'm starting to get a little tired there because the, the last episode really was just a lot of talking. I honestly expected it to be like all out war or something. Instead, they just the cops kind of won. I mean, the cops won a lot more than the drug dealers. And the entire episode, I'm like, I feel like Omar is going to come back. But he came back in a different way. I thought he was going to come in guns blazing, take down Stringer. Or Stringer was going to surprise us and be like an FBI informant or something. But it looks like D'Angelo is going to go to jail for 20 years. Avon is going to get like a slap on the wrist or something. Weebay is going to do life, but he ain't going to get the death penalty. But at the same token, he fessed up for a murder that they're pinning on Bird. So Bird is probably going to get out next season. Avon's going to still be running shit, whether from in the prison or not. Stringer has got all the shit going. But now Omar is like using this to his advantage and he's going to try to wipe in. Definitely knew that was going to happen because so much chaos is going on with the Barksdales and everything. It is Omar's time to shine. Carver was the rat, which I assumed. I assumed it was either Herc or Carver. Honestly, I had my money on Herc more so than Carver. But Carver is like his bosom buddy. So I assumed it was one of the two. But I'm happy it's Carver because he's a fucking shithead. And I hope he fucking dies. He has been... I have hated Carver since day one. Prisbluski I only hated because he cold cocked a kid and knocked his eye out. But Prisbluski has been on his best behavior since. Carver has just been a shithead from the moment I saw him until now and just gets worse. Like, I only hated Carver in the beginning because he was kind of like a wuss. Like, ah, I'm a big tough guy. Uh, it wasn't like a strong reason to hate him is what I'm saying in the beginning. I just disliked his personality. Now he's just a horrible person. He ratted on his team. He stole money with Herc, who also stole money. And now Herc is acting like he's like some sort of big shot. Like, like you guys listen to me. You got to use your heads. Hey, hey, hey. He's a fucking idiot. Use your heads. He's fucking stupid. Uh, I hate Herc now, too. I used, I liked Herc at one time. Uh, Greg's is alive. Greg's is better. She's healing. She'll probably be back next season. Daniel's. Ain't taking no more shit. He basically told Irvin to like fucking stick it. You want to wrap me out? You want to like go to get like get down on me or whatever? Like, good luck, buddy. I'll I'll take my licks. Tomorrow I'm going to do a season review. I just need to think about it a little more. I am exhausted. It is late. So I'm going to edit all these tomorrow and then do a season review. Any comments? Write them down below. Like and subscribe. And I will see you guys tomorrow. With all the episodes and the review. Have a good night. Peace.